You're listening to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast. I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening to Harry Simeon. Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast sponsored by Manscaped.com. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Simiou, and I'm delighted to be joined by a very special guest. It's Joe from All Leeds TV. How you doing, mate? Welcome to the podcast. Yeah, good, man. I'm, I'm uh, buzzing, man. Can't wait for Sunday and thanks for having me on, man. No worries at all. The pleasure is all ours. Really looking forward to this one because uh, Arsenal and Leeds haven't met in the Premier League since April 2004. Unbelievable wow. to think yeah. that two of England's <laughs> biggest football clubs have not locked horns in the top flight for so long. Um, just want to get sort of your general thoughts on, on Leeds' this season so far, Joe. Uh, give us a bit of sort of insight as to what we can expect going into this one. First of all, the promotion. I mean, you must yeah. have been absolutely buzzing. It was long overdue. Describe that feeling to me, first of all, um, for um, a Leeds fan. Yeah, uh, it's been a long 16 years, man. <laughs> it's so, so long. I don't think we ever imagined that it had it had taken this long. And it didn't just stay there. You know, we, we, we dropped down to League One, man. It felt at times, Harry, that we were never going to make it back. Genuinely, you know, the way that it, it, it unfolded um, uh, in that first season under Bielsa, you know, beating Frank Lampard's derby for all... It, it, Three three games we played them and then and then we just capitulated in the last forty five minutes. It was like this is never going to happen, you know, tears and everything. But for Bielsa to stay and, and to come back and do what he did, it's a little bit sobering because I wanted to be in the ground. I dreamt of that moment for so long, you know. Um, I wasn't a season ticket holder in the Premier League days, um, so for me it was it was something that I dreamt about that we when we finally make it back I knew what I was doing I was going onto the pitch I knew where I was going do you know <laughs> so to have that taken away was was not ideal but ultimately to to be back where I believe we belong you know we we came the running joke for a while um leads leads are falling apart again was the chant that used to get chanted at us every week um so it's just nice to be back and yeah it was amazing man we did a live stream to be fair on our channel and we had all sorts coming in. There was drinks flowing and everything, even on the live stream. It was brilliant, man. Just so glad to be back. Yeah, indeed. And and you're right when you say that Leeds belong in the top flight. Huge football club, incredible support. And as as I said to you earlier on when we were speaking off air, I have um, covered Leeds quite closely over the last couple of years. Probably been sort of the second team that I've been covering. So I've kind of been following the journey. And um, although there's a bit, there's a bit, there's a bit of, a bit of rivalry, rivalry between the two clubs and some historical rivalry, um, I am glad to see Leeds United back in the in the top flight. Um, what sort of influence has, has Marcelo Bielsa had on the club overall? Because you know, as you said, it felt like Leeds were never going to come back. There, out of nowhere, comes Marcelo Bielsa, a coach who's, and, and no disrespect to Leeds, but a coach who had managed in the top flights of yeah. various countries with some huge football clubs, mm. all of a sudden found himself in the championship. Was it a surprise when he came in? And how delighted have you been with the progress under him? Yeah, massive surprise, obviously, like you say, you know, there's um, <clears throat> some huge clubs he's managed, you know, at international and club level, you know, Chile and Argentina, to name a few. And for him to, to come to the championship, it's just absolutely amazing. But... You know, he did his due diligence and for Marcelo Bielsa, it's not about the club, it's about the project. It's about the city. It runs deep, you know. He's he's looked at Leeds United, you know. But, but when they went out to see him in Argentina, he'd already watched every single championship game from the previous season. You know, he, he knows his stuff, you know. They sat down and the, he was telling him, right, we need this player here, that player there, you know. And, and they said it took them weeks to get him to even discuss a contract. You know, um, he's just that that kind of guy. You know, so intense. And do you know what? He's 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 everyone's back in love with the football club. You know, it's just huge again. You know, season ticket sales all sold out, packed grounds every single week. Everyone's just just really fell back in love with it. You know, I I was there when we had the likes of Steve Evans, David Hockaday. I remember one night being midweek game 
against Blackburn. We had about six, seven thousand there, Harry, and it was shocking. The football was shocking, and it was just terrible, you know. Um, and 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 he's just not only that, he's made us all better individuals, you know. <laughs> like he's just he's just a, an amazing human, you know. Like the money that he so when the Spygate thing happened, he paid the fine himself, you know, over two hundred thousand pounds. You know, he wouldn't let the club pay it. He's you know he bought uh, Newell's a, a brand new training complex, you know, with some of the money he received in in his contract from Leeds. He's just. He's just an amazing human, and, and the football, the football is the best I've seen. You know, I remember the first game against Stoke, and we we battered them, and it was like pinch yourself moments. You know, it's like what's happened to my football club? That's what it feels like. You know, what has happened because the the football scintillating. Like I, I keep saying to the younger generation that watch our stuff, please enjoy it because he ain't going to be here forever. And when he does move on, know that the level that we're performing at, the intensity will drop regardless of who we bring in because he's that intense, you know. And that's why the likes of Pep, Arteta, Simeone, all rate him so highly, you know. And we're so lucky. We're lucky. We're lucky to have him. Yeah, he's a fantastic coach, a fantastic character. And as you said, probably most importantly, he's a fantastic human being. And yeah. he's adored by it by so many. Um Let's let's talk a little bit about Leeds' this season so far. Uh, obviously, the opening day of the season, they had that really good performance at Anfield. Mm. Desperately unlucky to lose that day. Then they picked up a few positive results, but they've kind of been brought... I don't want to see, say back down to earth, but there's been a couple of disappointing results of late um, against Leicester City and then against Crystal Palace. I mean, I think from my perspective, looking at it as an Arsenal fan, looking in... If I was a Leeds fan, I wouldn't be too downbeat about it mm. because this is the Premier League yeah. and the level of competition is is so different and it's so much more difficult to put together runs of results. I think Leeds will be fu- uh, will be fine, but you know, has it been a little bit of a come down seeing Leeds suffer back to back defeats? Uh, yeah, yeah, of course it has because I was getting carried away. That's what I do, Harry, though. I do get carried away with it, you know. I was thinking after them early games, that's it, Europe's on the card. I'm looking around the division thinking teams are dropping points. Let's go, man, we can do this. I still think we will have a top 10 finish. I genuinely believe that, you know. It's just, I think, Leeds United fans knew before the season started that the way we play, there will be games where we are on the end of hidings, but there'll be games where we give top teams. And we've seen that already. We ran Liverpool. We, I mean, the game against City was one of the best games so far this season for me. Um, uh, it, it was brilliant. And then we've been beat. But I think it's because if you have to give Leeds fans the current position now, prior to the season starting, that have snapped your hands off, it just so happens that the four ones have come in consecutive games if the 4 one had come at the start of the season and then the most recent, we wouldn't be worried. But because it's come in two consecutive games, too many people are going, oh, no, that's it. We're being found out. We're going to get part, you know, and it's not the case. It's not the case. We knew this would happen. It's just frustrating that it's happening in consecutive games. Yeah, understandably so. It's um, yeah. it's the nature of modern football, though, as well, isn't it? People have become yeah. so kind of reactionary with mm-hmm. stuff and... Um, sometimes it's easy to get caught up in that and that kind of tidal wave of negativity. Yeah. Um, so it's important to detach yourself at times. Arsenal travel to Ellen Road on Sunday, and I, for one, I'm not going to say I'm delighted because I really do miss going to football. I, I absolutely, you know, it is such a big part of my routine, my life. I, I hate the fact that we haven't been able to go, but I am kind of relieved that we're not going to face an Ellen Road crowd because I can <laughs> imagine the atmosphere in there, particularly for the visits of some of the bigger clubs. I'm not going to say the best sides anymore because that's up for debate, but you know, <laughs> the likes of Arsenal, the United's, the Liverpool's, with whom Le- Leeds have a, a long history, the atmosphere would have been amazing. And, and does that level the playing field in your view uh, going into this one? Oh, 100%, Harry. I think for me personally, like I look at that City game is a perfect example. I think if fans are in the ground, and some people might say, I'm not so sure, but we win that game if fans are in the ground. The way we were peppering City, Edison had a had a, an awesome second half, you know, but I just feel the roar of the crowd and some of the individuals in that City team may, may have wilted under that pressure, you know, because players do. It's a fact, and, and 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 it can be a cauldron at times, you know, Canelan Road. Um, so, yeah, I mean, obviously... 
we've seen it with all teams that get promoted, to be fair. You know, look at Sheffield United. I mean, I don't think any teams suffered more than Sheffield United without the fans being in the ground. You know, yeah. they can be your 12th man at times. And, and I think at Leeds United, it's exactly the same. You know, we're a... We're an unforgiving bunch, you know. So I think, um, yeah, if we were in that ground, um, I would have a lot more confidence going into any game. You're right; it does level it, you know, slightly. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned Sheffield United. I was at Bramall Lane last season um, before the lockdown in the away end behind the goal, and you know it was an old-fashioned football yeah, ground. You can uh, almost reach out and touch the back <laughs> of the goal net, which is incredible because you know. At the Emirates Stadium, we've kind of... It's a lovely stadium, don't get me wrong. Mm. And it's the facilities are fantastic. But you do lose a bit of that yeah. atmosphere. And, uh, you know, when you move into these kind of bigger stadiums and you're further away from the pitch, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, it, is, it is different. Mm. Um, what kind of sort of approach can we expect from, from Leeds United at the weekend? You know, they're a side that like to play on the front foot, foot that like to attack... Um, are you expecting more of the same? Bielsa, I'm not going to say he's limited to one way, but he has a very specific way of playing, doesn't he? Do you expect him to move away from that at all? I don't, Harry. You know, I, I do have quite a few of these and a lot of people say, you know, will he change? And, you know, will he drop back? To, I, I was speaking to the LFC day trippers, Gav, and he was like, will he drop them back 10 yards so that, you know, the, the counter-attack isn't there for uh, Crystal Palace or uh, uh, Leicester? But he just won't, you know. He doesn't have a plan B. And sometimes I don't get the plan B. What's a plan B? Stick a big man up top and just hit it to him, you know? I don't get it at times. But I think... He, his plan B is plan A better. You know, that's that that's the, the facts behind it. I think the key thing is we'll have key personnel back for Sunday. So it will be a totally different outfit that faces Arsenal than seen in the last two games. But you know yourself, and I think a lot of people who follow Bielsa know he won't change. Um, you know, he'll 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 move move around, you know, um players within, you know, the the game itself, tactics, etc. But in terms of the the style, it, it'll be on the front foot, you know, from the off. Um, and we've spoken earlier and hopefully we can we can catch Arsenal cold because the first goal under Bielsa is so vital, genuinely. Um, we need to be clinical. We need to take our chances against a top Arsenal side. How are you feeling going into this one? Are you feeling confident? Having Obviously, Arsenal were not coming into this in, in particularly good form either. Mm. Um, you know, some a couple of really... Uh, disappointing back-to-back -back home defeats. Um, yes, we got the win against Manchester United not so long ago. And we're, we're going well in the Europa League. We're going mm. well in the Carabao Cup. But, you know, there, there there is a feeling that Arsenal are on a bit of a slide again. Um, and it's kind of like Mikel Arteta took us to a certain point and then at the start of this season, we've had some disappointing results. And a few questions are starting to be asked of him. Do you look at this as an opportunity for Leeds to to take a big scalp and and do you think that, that Leeds have a good chance of taking all three points? I do, mate, I do. Um, look, you, you, we, we've spoke about it earlier, you know, uh, Arsenal have been pretty shot shy of late, um, so so that's good from a Leeds United perspective. We, we will create, we will create. Um, I, I, you've got key personnel out. I, I, I know we mentioned El Nenny, I know he's been great, but like you say, probably a lot of Arsenal fans would have said before, They'd have let him go, but he's had a bit of a resurgence. Um, but I think part is a big one. Um, I think he'd be a huge miss. And to think he's only been around such a short space of time, he's still uh, quite a huge player. Um, I, I, I do think we will create chances and we need a result. We need a result, Harry, because after Arsenal, we've then got Everton. We've then got Chelsea. I then... I think we've got West Ham, Newcastle, which will be tough games for Leeds because that's where we'll struggle where teams don't really want to come and have a go. Yeah. They're going to sit in, you know, two banks of four and, and catch you on the counter. Um, so there the games will struggle. I think we, we will create opportunities against Arsenal. Um, we just need to be clinical and Patrick Bamford needs to have his shooting boots on and, and hopefully he does. And I, I'd love it. I, I, to be honest, I just want, I'm glad football's back. That's the main thing. So that's my main excitement. But of course, it's a huge team. A uh, huge team in, in Arsenal, and uh, if we can get on a positive result, then yeah, good. Because the media narrative, if we lose this one and we're on a, the end of a spanking, will be Leeds are getting relegated. They're just another Norwich, and I can't deal with it. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean, <clears throat> and we it's like we both kind of need the result because yeah. of that exact same reason. You know, if Mikel Arteta doesn't get a result, well, the Arteta out crew will be growing, yeah. and and 
gaining momentum and all of that. And that's not ever helpful to have around yeah. the football club. Um, so yeah, fingers crossed the, <laughs> for, for, for us that we get the result. And um, I hope, I wish you guys all the best for the rest of yeah. the season after Sunday, Cheers, of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, thank you so much for joining me, mate. Really, really appreciate Pleasure. it. How can people uh, give you a follow, check out your channel um, and keep up with the fantastic work that you do? Yeah, it's uh, at Winman Joe on Twitter uh, and at All Leads TV on all social medias. And um, we'll be doing a watch along for the game. So if by any chance you you know you know want to see it from United perspective, head on over to All Leads TV, um, and you can get your comments in there, man. Um, yeah, the love is appreciated, Harry. Thanks, mate. No worries at all. Thank you for joining me, mate. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you to every single one of you guys. Don't forget to smash the like button. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And leave us a review if you're listening via the podcast stores. We'll be back very, very soon with more Arsenal content. Until then, take care. Stay safe. You're listening to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast. I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening to Harry Simeon.